Oli? Papa. Oh, I told you not to do this. But, Papa, it's a fine boat. I, I built it all by myself. Oh, I came to America to work on the land and have something to show for my sweat. I cleared this place. I plowed this ground so you could own it someday and have something to show for your sweat. Who owns the water under a boat? Oli. Oli, two of your uncles back in Norway drowned at sea. And the rest of them will, too. Not one of them ever planted a potato. As long as I live, oh, you're going to keep your feet on the ground. You never did go to sea, Oli, but you never planted a potato either. Your hands weren't meant for the soil. They felt better in the grease. Remember your first job away from home? Apprentice in a farm machinery plant? You were 16. Then you learned about electric motors, and they were your next love. Then Pittsburgh, where you worked in the steel mills, and that somehow led you to Chicago, where you learned to make steel into things you treasured, tools, because tools made engines. After that, engines came first in your working life. Automobile engines, motorcycle engines, any kind of engines. Mrs. Doyle was kind enough to let you build your first in the basement of her boarding house in Milwaukee. Say, mister. You gonna run your engine again tonight? I think so. Yes, I think so. Can we watch? What's your name, mister? Holy, Holy Evan Rule. Mine's Rob Carey. This is my brother Russ. Maybe it won't run anymore. Gee, that's too bad, Mr. Evanrude. Well, I think we're out of gasoline. You got any gasoline in your pockets? Nope. <laughs> All right. Well, I find something. Gee, thanks a lot. <laughs> What's he doing now? I don't know. Delicious, Mrs. Doyle. Thank you. <laughs> if you don't Thank like you. it, Mr. Fireman, there's another rooming house right down at the end of the... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you tell him where he's going. Now we go. Gee, Mrs. Doyle. Oh, thank you. I made these... Too much gas, Mrs. Doyle. Ah, uh, you did that all right. You gave it all there is. Turn off the gas upstairs and we'll all be killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Bradley, I'll take care of this. 
I'll set your supper out in the kitchen if you'll stop the tinker and right away. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Thorne. Oh, <laughs> Who are those two yahoos? Well, uh, uh, they've been helping me. Well, get along with both of you and close the window. You never did stop tinkering, Ollie. Not long after you put out the lights in Mrs. Doyle's house, you married the sister of those two yahoos. Soon you were running your first shop and tinkering with that contraption your friends called the knuckle buster and your wife Bess called your coffee grinder. It was the first model of your outboard motor. Ollie. Ollie, you can't work on an empty stomach. Oh, Bess, I was coming home in just a minute. Mm -hmm. Well, now you just wipe the grease off your hands and eat this. Oh, all right. <sighs> oh, Ollie. Ollie, look at this. Now you and I are going right out and buy you a new suit. Oh, Bess, I haven't got the time. Besides, I don't need a new suit. Mm. I only wear it when I'm not working. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Say, Bess? Hmm? You know that fellow that borrowed my motor? Yes. He wants to buy ten of them. Oh? Ten. Oh. I don't know. Ole. I know. Now, look, we can sell these motors for $42.50 a piece. I figured out time and materials, and that's what we've got to charge for them. Oh, that's a lot of money, Bess. Uh, Ollie, I think you'd give them away. You have a wife and son to support now, remember? Yes. I think I better stop making these things and work on something that will bring in enough to keep the shop going. I have to build up a business. Ollie, now you look at me. Ollie, sometimes I wonder about you. Well, this can be your business. Make these motors, build them better. Look, Ollie, I made up this advertisement, and I think we ought to put it in the newspapers, and I think we ought to put it in that magazine about boats. Now, take a look at this. You made this, huh? I made it up. <laughs> Come on. Don't row. Throw the oars away. Use an Evinrude motor. Don't row. Throw the oars away. Use an Evinrude motor. Best. That's wonderful. People might write to us. Maybe, maybe they will order a motor. Oh, Holy, that's the idea. <laughs> anyway, we'll see. Yeah, I might be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't row. Throw the oars away. No sooner said, no sooner done. She said, get a motor, and we got one. No aching back, no strain, no row. Drop the oars and let her go. That's what you meant, isn't it, Ole? And now there's no far distant shores, no tug, no pull, no rowing chores. No sooner said, no sooner done. She said, get a motor, and we got one. Got one. We got two. Yay, team. Don't have to grind, don't have to crank. Reach right out and give her a yank. Or if she'd rather, my lady knows, just turn the key and away she goes. It's Madam the Captain now, riding high, wide and pretty, cruising for pleasure. It's a rich man, poor man, mother and son, find fun on the water, second to none, sitting pretty in outboard time. It isn't any wonder you think in rhyme. Brother and sister, say, fill him up, mister. And we don't need tugs or fat old freighters. We plant them where we want them, like your father's potatoes. In the water, that is. There's so many lovers changing to boaters. A special kind of law looks after floaters. And even the law is using outboard motors. But it's not all for pleasure, not all for fun. Work boats go where the work's to be done. Just two men, the boat's not big, but they put their trust in an honest rig, and they make for the open sea. There's a shrimp boat trawling on a calm by you, a sturdy motor and a two-man crew. That's a small size rig they're trawling in, but a man-sized catch they're hauling in. And it takes a man-sized motor for the job. It's a shrimp for size, but it sure packs a whale of a lot of power. 
Dragon for the scallop in a salty sea, motor to the windward, motor to the lee. One small boat and a one-man crew, but two-fisted motors pull him through. Take him there and get him back, too. Trolling for the salmon in the ocean air, out where the big ones rip and tear. You can't go to sea in an easy chair, but two strong motors will get you there. And they'll keep you going, too. Spite of swell and high water. Say, we're catching fishermen now, Ollie. Yes, sirree, they're hooked by the smooth power of your motor. Alaska, Ollie. Remember the first motor you shipped up there? Rugged waters, they said. Well, they still are. Look at the motor on the lifeboat of that fishing trawler. That's what they think of your engine, Ollie, in the 49th state of the Union. There's 49 states and every one American's boating at work and fun. 49 states, not hard to guess, where they find life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They find it on the water only. On a lazy Monday, you slide along the bay, see a big flotilla where it never used to lay. Skippers and passengers away on the job. Comes a happy weekend, comes a happy mob. School's a weekend sailor. Yes, Ole, your engine's doing fine. Better than you hoped in 199. Who would have dreamed Ole Evan Rood, the owners of your motor, would make a mighty multitude? 20 million Americans, 5 million outboards purring along, humming a star-spangled powerful song. 5 million now, how many more? It's 1974. A man's best friend is his motor. In your first full year of production, Ole, your shop turned out 1,000 motors. A fellow named Chris Meyer had enough faith in you to invest $5,000 in your idea. That was a lot of money in those days, but you were a pretty good risk. Bess was your business manager, signing herself B. Evanrude, so your customers wouldn't know they were dealing with a woman. In 1911, the Evanrude company moved into a new plant, hired 100 shop hands, and produced more than 2,000 motors. Paperwork piled up on Bess even though she hired six assistants. 1912, your plant shipped 4,650 motors. In 1913, 9,412 motors. And that year, your teammates' health began to fail. She was too tired to go on. Bess? Bess? Yes, Ollie? Chris Meyer wants to buy us out. I told him today, we talk it over. If we sell, I have to stay out of the business for five years. I think we ought to sell Bess. Five years. You'll have a chance to get a good rest. And maybe we could travel. Hmm? And uh, have some fun. Hmm? Yeah. Two votes for selling, motion carried. You had five years, Bess, to mend your health and see the USA in a brand new touring car. While Oli grew up with Ralph, your only child. Uh, let me have the pliers, Ralph. No, that's not the pliers. Let, let go, let, let it go, Ralph. Let it... <laughs> Wish you could see how the family travels today. Riding along the highway, everyone looking glad. Mother is sitting pretty, laughing across to Dad. Dad is in the driver's seat, son is at his ease. Daughter humming softly a song of the summer breeze. It's a riding, gliding over the open way. And riding right behind us, a carload of fun and play. Cutting in the windward, cruising proud and free. Rolling along the highway, heading her out to sea. There's 
there's 50 horse behind us, a hundred or more before, taking us through the country town that faces the pleasant shore, taking us through the village, laughing all the way, rolling along the highway on a summer's day, rolling along the highway on a summer's day. Making it through the tall gate, knowing we're almost there. Looking to see the water, smelling it in the air. And there she lies before us, shining in the sun. A million miles of ocean and a thousand leagues of fun. A million miles of ocean and a thousand leagues of fun. You weren't dreaming that big on your long holiday, Ollie. Remember those nights in the hotel at New Orleans? That noise from the street was the sound of gay crowds celebrating Mardi Gras. You didn't even hear it, Oli. Your thoughts were bolted fast to the plans for your next motor. It's all right, Oli. I'm ready to go back to work anytime you are. Oh, Bess. I knew it. I knew it all the time. Bess, we've got a good one. Two cylinders, not one anymore, and we'll build it with that new aluminum. It will weigh less than 50 pounds and give us three horsepower. Think of that, Bess. 27 pounds less than the avenue they're building now, and one horse stronger. Oh, Oli, I've been reading your mind. You want to get back to work as soon as possible, don't you? Yes, well... When we get back to Milwaukee, I'll build a model and I'll offer it to Chris Meyer for production. And when he builds one or two of them, I'm going to test them in the tank. Oh. And I'm going to watch the, the gas. All clean. right, Oli. I'll pack our things up first thing in the morning. Yes. In 1921, you were ready with the motor that changed the world's thinking about outboards. The first opposed twin cylinder motor made of aluminum, machined so precisely that it set a new standard for the industry. You couldn't legally use your old company name then, so you called it the Evinrude Light Twin Outboard. The initials spelled Elto. They also spelled a second success for you and Bess. In all respects, except that occasionally it stalled under turbulent water conditions. First I thought this might be due to the waters affecting the ignition, but I wasn't sure. Therefore, I return the motor to your factory for repairs. I want to thank you for sending me a completely new motor until mine is back in running order. I never expected that, and you can tell the world I am satisfied. Very truly yours, John Delaney, Gloucester, Mass. Though I tell him that's part of our regular policy, and be sure to thank him for this very nice letter. Now, see what else we have here. Here's a fellow with something on his mind. Mm -hmm. Mr. B. Evanroo. Dear Mr. Evanrude, that's you, Mrs. Evanrude. I have a great itch to travel everywhere, and I have just completed a trip from my home in Portland, Oregon, to Hoboken, New Jersey, by boat with one of your motors. My word. Enclosed are some photographs of our trip that I thought you might find of interest. Let's see those. For heaven's sake. Holy, come here, take a look at this. Okay. That's hey. That's wonderful, Bess you'd say about this, Oli. A retired storekeeper and his wife on a houseboat cruise. A floating second honeymoon, 600 miles from home, with lots more country to see, many more rivers to cross. The river is deep, the channel is wide, the motor is humming a song. And everyone has a wonderful time as we go floating along. Mm Thank you. 
That's how it is today, Oli. We wind up the motor and go wherever the water goes. It's a new way of life, a water way of life. But outboard motoring sowed its wild oats before it settled down. There was a period of rip and roar, of speed and more speed. I don't know, Bess. I just don't think that racing is the big future in our kind of business. The company that spends the most money wins the most races. But what does that prove? Well, I agree, Oli. The women don't like speed and danger. They want family recreation, and that's our business, the family. That's right, Bess. The family. Outboard motoring is a family affair, the attainable dream of life on the open water. You made captains out of kids, Oli. A boy has to grow up to fly a plane or drive a car, but he can go to sea now. The wheel in his hands, his eye on the horizon. The outboard motor will never again be a knuckle buster, a putt-putt, a gadget. It's the quiet power behind a big idea. The idea that every man may enjoy the pleasures of life afloat. It's the membership card in the all-American, everybody welcome, all hands eligible, no gold braid yacht club. Remember that acrobatic stunt called water skiing that a few reckless daredevils used to perform? Well, today it's a national sport. Even mothers are giving it a go, and their children are showing them how. Things have changed so, Oli, that there's as much fun riding behind the motor as there is riding in front of it. Your first motor couldn't have pulled all that weight, Oli, but its basic design is still followed by the industry today. Then, came the 1921 Elto, the first successful twin and the first made extensively of aluminum. The 1928 Quad, the first four-cylinder outboard and the first to pass the 40 mile an hour mark. The 1930 Fold Light, the first folding outboard. The 1931 460, over 70 miles an hour in time trial run. The 1934 Light 4 Imperial, first to wear a protective hood. That's where you left off, Oli. And this is where we are today. Swinging down the river and running around the bay, fill the day with laughter, in the air with spray. On the trail to seaward, on the trail to home, there's a happy seaway made of spray and foam. A long, long trail to wind into a sea of happy days, Oli. A foam and furrow. Saturday mornings, weekend sailors cruise around, looking over the beaches. Mighty pretty out there. It's a short fellow, long fellow, rich man poor, running on the water on a weekend tour from New York Harbor to the Golden Gate. Every man's a sailor, every girl a mate. And is everybody happy? <laughs> There's no need to ask, Oli. Yes, Oli, your engine's doing fine. Better than you hoped in 1909. Who would have dreamed, Oli, Evan Rude, the owners of your motor make a mighty multitude. 20 million Americans raising the spray in rivers, bays, lakes, and in shallow inlets. And there's lots of excitement, thrills and sport with wind to the starboard, wind to the port. Easy on the pocket, easy on the mind. Hightail and hitchhikers hanging on behind for dear life. Pennants flying, waving at the breeze, setting on bows that cut through the seas. The sea is the limit, it's all your own. But friendly faces tell you, you are not alone. No siree, the throttle is always wide open on good fellowship. 
Five million outboards purr right along, humming a star-spangled powerful song. Five million now, how many more? In 1974. Doesn't matter, Oli. Every motor means happy days. Yes, sirree, a man's best friend is his motor. Oli, you and I are going right out and buy you a new suit. Oh, Bess, I don't need a new suit. I only wear it when I'm not working. I think you'd wear shop clothes to your own funeral, Oli. Hmm. Sure I would. Then I, uh, I wouldn't have to change when I got to heaven. You think heaven is a machine shop, don't you? Well, somebody has to run those little wheels up there. Maybe that's my job. Only you know about the little wheels, Oli. We know about the five million outboard propellers that spin in every part of the world. We see the signs of you everywhere because your name leaves a wake wherever man moves in a boat. Revered where every small craft floats, his name the wake behind the million boats. Oli Urban Rude, Oli Urban Rude.